the second equation. Close. 480 equals 2L 4W. Two lengths plus four width. Now, you can tell that's kind of the aha moment, right? I mean, so we're, we're going to try to make that happen for you, and we're going to do some exercises to try to produce that. So um, I want to get rid of one of these variables, so I'm going to choose to solve for one. It's up to you. I think it's easiest to solve for L. So 480 minus 4W is equal to 2L. Divide through by 2. I get 240 minus 2w is equal to l. I can then take this and do what with it? Right. So look at what I've created. I've created an equation for area. Not only is it an equation, it's a function. It's a function in terms of what variable? What is the variable that I will be using exclusively as I write this. W is equal to W times Now you guys are right when you think of L that this is L but it's now expressed with the W variable. So that means that if I am given a width I can find the area. So at this point, the, the farmer could play around and say, okay, well, what if I made a width of 10? Then what would the area be? Or maybe I'll make a width of 20. Then what would the area be? Or maybe a width of 40. What would the area be? Well, his goal is to maximize the area. Well, what shape does the area function make? A parabola that's upside down. Well, the farmer's goal is to maximize the area. Does that have a maximum? Where does it occur? At the vertex. That is an xy value, correct? Now, in this problem, I don't have x and y. What replaces the x value in this problem? W. 
And what replaces the y value? Careful. Hey. Look, it says instead of y equals 240x minus 2x squared, it says a equals 240w minus 2w squared. Area is the y value, w is the x value. Okay? So, how do we find the vertex? What do we do? Yeah, you can either turn a vertex 1 or do negative b divided by 2a. What would be easier in this situation? Negative b divided by 2a. So negative 240 divided by 2a. 2a would be negative 4, and I get 60. What does that mean? That's the width, right? So if I have a width of 60, that's when the maximum area occurs. Now, is it asking for what the maximum area is, or is it asking for the dimensions that will... The dimensions. So he should have 60 yards by 480. Yeah, whatever would make 480, but we've already solved for L here, haven't we? Just plug it in. 240 minus 2 times 60, 120. And that's the answer. Now, as you, you know, think about that type of problem, you, you might say to yourself, well, you know, I mean, you know, come on, would a farmer really do that? I, I guess there's two, time, two types of farmers, right? One who just sets up a fence that's like, well, this is just what I want to do. And one who says, well, I want to maximize the area. Because if you maximize the area, that means more space for the animals to roam, right? That means more grass for the animals to eat. And that's all good stuff, right? So are we being intentional about our work or unintentional? Okay. Now. Let's practice that aha moment because it's not easy to come up with, but I'm going to give you some ideas that kind of that kind of assist you, okay? So we're not going to solve these problems. We're simply going to model them as a function. So it says the sum of two numbers is 24. Find a function that models their product in terms of x, one of the numbers. So this sounds complicated. Let's try to dissect it. So we start here. Sum of two numbers is 24. Give me an equation that says sum of two numbers is 24. Good. Now, I'm going to look at what function I'm trying to write. I'm not trying to write a function for the sum. I'm trying to write a function for the product. So their product. Product is equal to x times y. This is the function that I want, but I want a function just in terms of x, not in terms of y. How do I get rid of y? So y is equal to 24 minus x. That goes in for y. So now I have the product in terms of x, or a function of x, is equal to x times 24 minus x. That's 24x minus x squared. A picture 8 inches longer than it is wide. Find a function that models the area of the picture. So right now, what is the equation for area? Length times width. What I would like to do is I would like to get rid of one of those variables. Thoughts? How? Eight inches longer than it is wide, right? So I can simply just plug in W plus 8 for L. Area in terms of width is 
W plus H times W or W squared plus 8W. Yeah, so the, the goal that we're trying to come up with is a function that models it with one variable. Because then the fact is, is that what happens in box 1, 3, and 4 is pretty consistent. But what happens in box 2, that, that's really kind of the, the genius of it all. And so we're trying, to, we're trying to piece those together. Look at letter C, all right? A rectangle has an area of 40. Find a function that models its perimeter in terms of length and one of its sides. So is the goal to model a function for area or is the goal to model a function for perimeter? Perimeter. How do you write perimeter for a shape like this? Yeah. Well, I've got two variables. I need to figure out a way to get rid of a variable. I need to use something in the problem. What can I write? Very good. W times L is equal to 40. I want to get rid of a variable, so I should solve for yeah, either one. Let's solve for a W this time. By both sides by L, I get width is equal to 40 over L. So now it's perimeter in terms of what variable? L. And that would be equal to, what is 2 times 40 over L? 80 over L plus 2L. This is a really good question for you guys right now. Do you know what that shape looks like? Yeah, do you know what that shape looks like? Yeah, do you know what that shape looks like? Very good. So couple of you have seen this. I, I just want to be clear. So you, you're, you're not going to be expected to graph this, but I just want to see you something that's coming up. And it's really cool. Some other people really found this interesting as well. If I had, say, uh, uh, let's say 3 over x plus 2, you would say that, you know, that's going to be that reciprocal function, but it's going to be shifted up two units, right? Okay, great. Well, this one is a reciprocal function as well, but it's not a plus 2, it's a plus 2L, right? So what's the slope of 2L? If you were to graph that, it's a line, right, with a slope of... So the cool thing about the graph is it does have a vertical asymptote at 0, because you can't plug at 0, but instead of a horizontal asymptote, it has a, what we call a slant asymptote with a slope of 2. And it makes this shape. Well, now, now, but, but think about it. The original graph that you're talking about, do those graphs really have maximums and minimums? Does this have a maximum and a minimum? Yeah. And so we, we find that minimum or we find that maximum then. And the thing is, is that we can't do it using our algebra skills. We would have to go to our calculator. In calculus, you learn how to do this by hand, and it's no big deal. It's pretty cool. You're, 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 you're absolutely right. There are definitely, there's the majority of people in the class would say that was a big deal. There, there, are, there are some that would say, hey, it, no, just calculate. Just do it. Okay, let's, let's look at the last one. Okay, what's the goal of this one? I want to write a function in terms of volume. Volume is equal to length times width times height, right? And I've got a box, rectangular box, but it's got a square base. Should 
Sure. Yeah, six by six by ten. Sure. Excellent. So, so Gigi's uh, done some excellent thinking about the problem already. Uh, what does she know about the base? Two sides are the same. So if this one was W, I would call this side W as well, right? So what would the height be? Three times more than the, the depth, or in this case, whatever we link, uh, wrote as the width. So three times the width. If we, sure, if we call this depth and that depth, then we would say this would be three times the depth. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. You've done a poor job drawing it. Okay. Right? All right, so volume in terms of width, then, is equal to three times the width cubed when you multiply all those together. So now that you've gotten some practice with that, let's do two more word problems today. We'll do three tomorrow, and I'll kind of finish our work. But I, I want you guys to uh, understand, again, I, I can try to do as many of these as I can for you to try to give you an idea of how to solve them. At some point, you, obviously, you would love to be able to do one on your own without any help. So uh, let's go back to the farmer problem. This time we'll make it just slightly different. Farmer's got a barn. Uh, Chickens are roaming around the barn, want to let them out into a pen. But this time, we uh, we build the pen against the barn. Why would you build a pen against the barn? Right, reduces the amount of fencing, okay? And you can also, like, open up a little door for the little chickens to get in that area and get some exercise. We all, we all like free-range chickens, right? That's, that's the whole idea now. We want everything to be free-roaming. I think we should have animals grazing the pond and athletic fields at Elderly High School. Yeah, yes, I agree. And then we can we can cook them up for lunch and do all sorts of stuff. All right. So, uh, what's the goal of this problem, folks? What's the goal of the problem? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to maximize the area, so area is length times width. So how do I want to label this? Okay, length and width and width. So I've got two variables, so I'm going to need two equations. I need a secondary equation. What do you got? W plus L is 320. Sweet. Now, again, you have the choice of whether you would like to solve for L or for W. I think it's easiest to solve for L, so that's what we're going to do. L is equal to 320 minus 2W. So now I don't just have an equation, I have a function. A function, meaning I have area in terms of one variable. Width is equal to 320 minus 2w times w. Or area in terms of w is 320w minus 2w squared. Sweet. If only we knew what that shape looked like. We do. Oh, goodness. If only we had like a handy dandy formula to come up with that maximum spot. Wait a minute. We do. Oh, goodness. Wow. It's like it's somebody's birthday. Um, neg <laughs> negative B divided by 2A. So we got negative 320 divided by 2A, negative 4, and I get 80. Sweet. 80 what? What the heck does 80 mean? Okay, now, you bring a plug it back in, but let's ask ourselves why. This is the x value, w, correct? The y value is area. Do we need the area? No, we need the dimensions. So I have the width, don't I? That's what 80 is. So we're going 80 yards, whoops, sorry, 80 feet by, how do I get the other dimension? Plug it in here, okay? So, and that's, so, 
Jackson. That's that's the question that sometimes I get confused with when people are saying, like, if we were to plug it back in here, it would actually give us the maximum area. If I plug it in here, it gives me the other dimension, and that would be 160 feet. So let us finish off with one more problem. We'll get the other three tomorrow. The nice thing is, is a problem you've seen before. A box with an open top is to be constructed from a rectangular piece of cardboard. The box is 10 by 18. I'm going to cut a square corner from each side and fold it up. Find the large volume. Simple. What's my goal? Largest volume. So I should write an equation for volume. Length times width times height. Shoot, we've got three unknowns. Oh boy. What's the width? Holy cow, birthday girl, where are you coming up with this stuff? And you're going to cut off a little bit from each side, and they're all going to be the same. So therefore, you're cutting X off of this side and X off of that side. She's entirely right. She remembers the problem as well. 18 minus 2X. The width would be 10 minus 2X. The height would be 10. When you fold this side up, what would the height be? X. So now I have the volume in terms of X, which happens to be the same thing as the height, right? So you could write v of h or v of x, I'm just write v of x, remain consistent with the other classes, and I've got x times 18 minus 2x, that's 10 minus 2x, oh boy, okay, I gotta multiply that out then, huh? Um, good thing uh, we have Ms. Kruger, Mr. Blacker, and Ms. Hansen, uh, they all taught us how to multiply those types of things, right? Okay, so uh, negative 2x and negative 2x make Four x squared times x, four x cubed. Okay, let's do the inside and outside. Inside gives us negative 20x, outside gives us negative 36, so that makes negative 56x multiplied by the x, negative 56x squared. And then 18 times 10 times x is 180x. You know what that looks like? Look. You guys are kind of making some shapes here, and, and, and it will make a shape that looks like that. But do we have a nice formula to find that spot? No. That's why we use calculus. But we don't know calculus, so we have to use our calculator. Okay. So let's go to our calculator. Uh, sorry, YouTube, my smart board is acting up. It's blinking. It's kind of like a bomb that's just ready to explode. Anyway. One time I was teaching class, and that thing all of a sudden started making a big noise, and it, it exploded. Yeah, uh, the light bulb shattered just glass. Yeah, it's scary. Totally scary. All right, yeah, there was a kid there, but it, the glass stayed up there. So, Okay, all right, so let's go on to Y equals... And I type in, whoop, wrong class. We got 4x cubed. Uh, I have a minus 56x squared. Is that right? I got plus 180x. And I go zoom 6. And I got my graph. Hmm. What the heck? Boy, if we only understood the problem, then maybe we'd understand the graph. Let's think about it, folks. Let's think about it. 
what's the biggest square you could cut off? Not 18, but 9, right? If you cut off 9, you have no side left, right? Look, 18 minus 2x, what would give you 0? 9. Hold on. Where does it cross the x-axis? 9. Now, let's get to Gigi's point. What about the other side? 5. What would give you 0? Where does it cross the x-axis? And what height would give you 0 volume? 0 for a height, right? Like, if we didn't cut any square at all, we wouldn't have any, any volume either. And so it probably goes to the x-axis as well. So we see some important parts of the graph here, but what we can see is the top. Yeah. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying, so in that situation, the uh, math doesn't understand that you can't have a negative dimension. You're absolutely right that our final answer, Gigi, has to be somewhere between 0 and 5. That is the domain of the problem. But the mathematics says, well, why can't you have negative volume? Math doesn't understand you can have a negative three-dimensional figure. Why not? Because math, math uh, is transcendent to all of our, our understanding. So, okay, so let's do this then. Uh, so I've got to find that value way up there, right? Well, that represents volume. If only I knew what the volume wanted to be. Well, let's go birthday girl list, okay? You're going to cut some X shape off of here. How much do you want to cut off? Can't cut off 20. It's too big. Got to come up and cut off somewhere between 0 and 5. What do you want to cut, Liz? Doesn't matter. 4. Liz wants to cut 4, okay? So she cuts 4 off. If she cuts 4 off, then what's going to be this dimension right here? That would be 2. What would be this dimension right here? 10, right? So that would be a volume of 80, right? So it looks like our volume is going to be, you know, somewhere up near 100 maybe. I, I want to be able to see this. I'm trying to decide if I change my window value, do I have to go a Y maximum of like 20,000? Do I have to go a Y maximum of like 2,000? How about 200? That would probably be good, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm just trying to figure out a reasonable idea of what the volume might be. So I'll go negative 200 so I see a balanced graph, and I'll change my tick marks to 100. Now hopefully I'll see a beautiful graph. Can you see a beautiful graph now? Yeah. Can you see exactly where the maximum is? Yeah. So a lot of times people graph it, like, Mr. Gans, my calculator is, is broken. No, it's not. It's just showing you that zoomed-in view. Take it out to where you want to be. Think about the problem. So I calculate what? Number four. And I go to the maximum. Go to the left. Enter. Right. Enter. Enter on guess. And I get 2.06 168.13. So this happens to be the x value. This happens to be the volume value. What is the problem asking for? Do I have the largest volume? Yeah, it is 168.13 inches cubed. That's the largest volume. Question. We have 4x cubed minus 56x squared plus 180x. Okay. Does your window go from negative 10 to 10? Okay. But then you got to change the y values to negative 200, positive 200. Like that. Like, so when I did zoom standard, yours doesn't look like that. Then something's typed in incorrectly. And I'll come in and help you find out what that is. Okay. All right. Yes. I, we just, we just made something up. We said, we, we, 
the most we can take off is five from each side. So suppose we cut a four by four square off. And that would give us, uh, uh, you know, it would give us uh, 10 minus uh, two times four, right? Which would be two. We have four for the height and then we'd have 10 for the length. So that gives us a reasonable estimate of like 80. Now it was larger than that, but at least we knew where we should start guessing a little bit, okay? All right, I got a worksheet for you.